It's Friday the 13th. It's January 2023. Um, I'm watching... Again, I, I did my morning exercise. Um, and around the lake, it was there was a lot of busyness. I don't know what it was. Um, I'm watching the headlines. Um, I'm reflecting back on something I saw the other day, which actually has a really good tie in. Um, there's this that's going on for me at the moment. Um, I saw earlier today, somebody put on my algorithm, something I've never seen before. There's, um, I then put it and tagged it so it was included in my Facebook file. Um, it's words I've heard, but like, like I've heard this word Leo, L-E-O. I know it's associated astrologically with whatever I was symbol I was born under. Um, but there's this other symbol of Gemini. And then it had four letters, A-U-R-A. -A. Now I watched something about a tuna the other day, a T-U-N-A. Uh, and on this like bizarro world of sorts, it said that the tuna, it was a red tuna, it went into on this Looney Tunes reference. It said the field mice were asking to be eaten by the cat. The cat was looking to be mauled by the dog and the dog was looking to be caught by the um, dog catcher. I mean, at some point, one runs out of options, and it just, there's some parabola going on. I am so confused. And so, I'm watching this. Um, so, this morning, they put on my algorithm this AURA image. It had symbols on it that looked very reminiscent of something um, in a systems anal anal analyze, what does it mean to you, this photo kind of a thing. Um, I know what it means to me, but my point is, is that um, if I don't know what a Gemini or an A-U-R-A -A is, I don't know what a P-I-B is, um, I don't have from where I was born um, to this family, whoever sleeps in this bed, um, throughout the series of rooms that I had access to humans and trying to build a future, um, I never was given this opportunity to learn these things. So... I was thinking, I'm like, so if there was a ladder <clears throat> um, built to that level of information or that level of crowd or that level of human existence where someone in the world knows about it, for some reason I wasn't given the same opportunity as whatever reached or had some way of escalating their life into knowing what it is and knowing how to reach it, who to ask for help, whose hand to hold, who to avoid. Um, my situation wasn't built that way. If, if and only if the universe has some intelligent design um, that then leaves room for it also has some form of intelligence mastery to know how to avoid fulfilling certain destinies and so on and so forth. So I don't know who uh, handles that level of human complaint, 
I mean, I guess at this point, in order to encapsulate my situation, so it's very me specific, so I don't hurt myself or others. If this I refer to as like a time capsule, because it's my POV, it's what happened to me, it's my truth, it's my story, it's what arrived, what in tried to interact. I mean, I created another human on the same timing piece that I am. It's a clockmaker. They've referred to it as a biological clockmaker. I can refer to it as a star maker, same star as myself, but there is a compor comportion. I mean, like, again, it's, it's one of those fancy degrees I didn't have access to or, and people that I should have been around, but didn't have access to for whatever reason. Um, and so there is this, I don't know who gets these offers to join the special league or the special job, whatever. But again, being that I was the one to have the special child in the special way and other factors still surrounding it, I don't understand why it wasn't handled the way that I needed it to be handled. Um... So here we are. So they have on this story. Um, and it says, oh, and last night they did have on something about they discovered, uh, the story said something about they discovered an Earth-like planet, an exoplanet. So that was interesting. I'm like, I wonder what the humans are referencing, like what that means, calling out on the news that way. Um, so there's a story about Amtrak that was on, um, some, they, these people were trapped on a train. They were just, they were on Amtrak. They were just on their travel schedule. Something happened to the train. They're going to tell this story, uh, real people, real story. Um, which again, if it wasn't on the nightly news, I'd never hear about it, but it definitely, for me, has this parody in, like, a Paramount um, that makes sense. Like, how did they handle the situation? Like, no, some of my feelings are correct with having the series of rooms that I've been in, knowing that there's one level of security, but then there's this other level of um, when it's taken too far. And, like, there were things that needed to happen, steps that needed to be taken that I don't know if they were, I have no idea. Were they avoided by something or someone? Were they withheld? I'm not clear. And by whom and for what? Um, so I'm watching this trapped on a train and the people on the, in the train car, they're be they're, they're there they start calling the police because they weren't getting the answers that they needed by the conductor or by the train engineers or whatever's on the train in charge of driving the train. Um, they start calling the police. And so the conductor actually comes on the overhead um, trans like voice box and says that um, they're not being held hostage and to stop calling the police. So I thought that that was interesting. Um, there's then something that um, came on today uh, about on it was it was explained differently between NBC on Channel Four. And on CBS this morning on Channel 2, on Channel 2, they had a satire. Uh, they did not display this Corvette that Biden has, but they had this other message. Um, I caught the difference between the two. Um, Do you want any pizza? No. And on NBC, they mention this person that they are appointing as a special master with the last name that's pronounced H-U-R, her. 
Um, again, I've heard in the headlines um, a different person named with that sound, but it was spelled H E. I think it was double R with Amber Heard just recently. Um, so I'm watching this trapped on the train and the response of the people on the train. And then I was thinking to myself as they're interviewing these passengers, it, it almost feels a little like, like journalism, I suppose, in not getting the correct answers or having the ability to ask the correct people the correct questions. Um, so to a nightmare for a trainload of Amtrak passengers. They were stuck for more than 30 hours after their train came to a dead stop hundreds of miles from their destination. Here's ABC's Gio Benitez. It was very, very upsetting, and we, they weren't really telling us what's going on. Drama on the tracks. Hundreds of passengers stuck on a train for over 36 hours, frustrated, hungry, and exhausted. Every single person on this train is tired of their excuses. The Amtrak... Auto train where passengers bring their cars on board, traveling Monday night from Lorton, Virginia, a DC suburb, to Sanford, Florida, near Orlando, but getting delayed when another train nearby, a freight train, derailed. We all had places that we needed to be. Pets not allowed to go outside. At least one passenger saying they felt trapped. The conductor even urging passengers to stop calling the police. For those of you that are calling the police. We are not holding you hostage. Amtrak saying in a statement, the train was detoured off its normal route in order to continue operating south. Customers have been provided meals, snack packs, and beverages. Gio Benitez for Channel 7 Eyewitness News. New York City. So this is something called Today in New York, and it's E11. Today is Friday, 1-13-2023. Um, this particular, um, mention is different than what's on CBS this morning. Her father. So we'll talk about that in a moment. Got to get to our top story. Starts in Washington. The president now facing a special counsel investigation over his handling of classified documents. That decision coming amid new revelations about the discovery of additional materials from the Obama administration at the president's home in Delaware. We've got now um, something I saw that they mentioned the other day about Reagan, President Reagan, and this. Iran Contra. I don't know what that is. But they had a Nixon's famous for Watergate. Reagan, according to this one mention, was something Iran Contra. And then there was someone else up there who rounded it out, which I don't remember. Um, but I do remember the Reagan mention. Um just because whatever, and then now, whatever's going on. Two reports this morning. We'll start with NBC's chief White House correspondent, Peter Alexander. Peter, good morning. Savannah, good morning. Republicans this week have been pressuring the attorney general to appoint a special counsel after he named one. Now, I find it interesting. They chose this man very, with the name Peter and Alexander, I'm just saying. To investigate Mr. Trump's handling of classified documents and after revelations that more documents tied to Vice President, Vice President Biden's time serving as Vice President had been discovered, one as recently as Wednesday, Garland did just that. The White House saying that it is confident that a thorough review will show that these documents were inadvertently misplaced. This morning, President Biden's handling of classified information is under growing scrutiny after Attorney General Merrick Garland announced that he's appointed a special counsel to investigate. The extraordinary circumstances here require the appointment of a special counsel for this matter. Garland naming Robert Herr, a former U.S. attorney in Maryland, appointed by then-President Trump to head up the inquiry. Now, this gentleman, 
Robert Herr with this last name. There's the name. Um, very interesting because when I went for my exercise this morning around Oakland Lake, um, it looks like in this area, there's a lot of relatives to something other than whatever I am. I don't know what they're called, but again, important material facts, I suppose, or ma important fraternal, maternal, paternal. I'm not even sure of the proper words, but what's in this area has a very specific heritage for which I don't have proper ID for. Garland also detailing the... Ex I did hear from one uh, representative called a TL. He said he represented something called the company. No, I can't confirm that. I mean, that was just face value. Um... I know what two names he used. I just abbreviate them by the word TL just because, again, dragnet being what it is, I have someone that kind of sort of but not really looks like Sergeant Gannon and someone who kind of sort of but not really looks like Sergeant Friday in the area. So, and I don't know what their story is, but it looks kind of like a dragnet of sorts. I really don't know who's who in the whatever the expanding timeline of discoveries. On November 2nd, the president's personal lawyers found fewer than a dozen classified documents at a former office in Washington, just six days before the midterm elections. And then on December 20th, they found another batch inside the garage of Mr. Biden's Wilmington, Delaware home, a location we got a glimpse of in this campaign video where the president keeps his Corvette. My Corvette's in a lock garage, okay? So it's not like you're sitting out in the street. People know I take classified documents and classified material seriously. It wasn't until two months later on January 9th that the discovery of the first batch of documents became public following media reports. And just two days ago, another classified document was found in a room adjacent to the garage, Garland revealing that the Justice Department was notified of that yesterday. Overnight, NBC News learning one of the documents found at Mr. Biden's former office was marked with the highest classification in government, what's called top secret SCI, according to a senior U.S. official and another person familiar with the matter. Last fall, President Biden slammed Mr. Trump for storing hundreds of class... Now listen, I don't know how to speak hillbilly. I really, I kind of sort of, but I don't think I do. I heard something around once called killing time. Um, that's frightening, especially when time has a biological feature and it has a clone. Um, it's not just drone timing, it's clone timing, um, for symmetry and then asymmetrical attacks. So, um, it's incredibly crucial amongst humanity to get this piece correct, but here we are. So... Um, the whole, like, 1976 problem, it's like a penalty flag at a football game for me. It's like, time out, American dad needs to know something about his daughter. This is not all right. It wasn't all right when it was whatever introduced, when it was, like, calling, and I kept telling it to stop calling, but it happened. So now penalty flag goes up into the New York state system and then a whole lot of other circumstances happen. Um, they also mentioned something on here. Um, when I get to it, I'll fill in that detail. Classified materials at his Mar-a-Lago estate. How that could possibly happen. How one, anyone could be that irresponsible. Mr. Trump last night again claiming that he had the right as a former president to retain classified documents, even though there's no evidence any of them had been properly declassified. You know, when Biden is admonishing me for documents that I'm allowed to have as president, I'm allowed to have, we were allowed to take this. Uh, many presidents took things with them. 
NBC News has also learned that federal law enforcement officials have now interviewed multiple aides who worked for then Vice President Biden. Oh, that was a hillbilly thing. Um, there's like one thing with Hardy Lee Bailey um, and his most respectable heritage and his really tall, very presence. Um, but when it gets to the 1976, that 70s show, um, it becomes a real problem for me and I'm the actual clock maker. So at Hillbillies with, uh, I, again, I don't know how this, these things get through, but there's a penalty flag. I call it toilet paper in the system, uh, that's now got more toilet paper on the system because nothing seems to have gotten better. It's only gotten worse with other frightening details arriving through the mishandling of the original necessity of what I needed. Biden in the final days of the Obama administration. That's according to two people familiar with the matter. And among those aides, former executive assistant, a woman by the name of Kathy Chung, who helped pack up Mr. Biden's vice presidential office in January of 2017. Chung is now a senior aide to the defense secretary. The Pentagon referred our questions to the Justice Department and Savannah, the White House is not comment. All right, Peter, thank you. We want to get more perspective on all of this from NBC senior Washington correspondent Hallie Jackson. Hallie, as ever, there are legal implications. There are political implications. Let's start with the law, the legal case, and how this might proceed. The key part of that, Savannah, in the legal case is going to be intent. That's the most important thing, according to legal experts that I've spoken with. And that is what the president's attorneys are really trying to emphasize, that this wasn't intentional. It was an accident. You keep seeing the word inadvertent in these statements. They're also emphasizing that they immediately reported it and cooperated with investigators. This seems like a clear signal to those who are investigating it that they did not have the intent to do anything wrong here. That's crucial. Let's talk about the politics because, needless to say, former President Trump faces his right. own special counsel investigation with regard to the classified documents that were discovered at Mar-a-Lago. And there's a lot of whataboutism, equivalencies being set up between these two cases, and it's a classic where you stand depends on where you sit moment in Washington. How is that playing out? So on Capitol Hill, look at it from the GOP side. First, Savannah, they want investigations. They want a damage assessment, for example, to see what happened here. As we head into 2024, I imagine they're going to try to use this, to your point, Savannah, to try to neutralize criticism of former President Trump. on the de And my whole thing is, I, I call him a hillbilly only because he moved to Beverly Hills, Florida. He was a Texas whatever, but he moved Beverly Hills, Florida. That seems like a really crucial detail. Now, CBS E10 uh, has the same story told a little differently with some satire wrapped into it. Yeah, it's now turning into a comedy routine, but it really is a funny. It's really serious. Some no it's jokes about it. it. You're absolutely right about that. We welcome you to CBS Mornings. we got a lot to share. Investigating the discovery of classified documents, the latest batch at the home of the president. The president responded to accusations that he just left these documents sitting around next to his Corvette. My Corvette's in a locked garage. Okay, so it's not like they're sitting on the street. I think I might leave my sweet cherry vet on the main drag where some street thugs could scuffle with their switchblades? No siree. <laughs> Keep that baby locked up tight in my garage. Sunday afternoons, I go in there and buffle with a handful of missile maps. This morning's I open. Is that a church reference? Just curious. I learned that word at Zion. Just saying. I show up. I don't normally catch TMZ live. It's S11 E95. Um, but it was right on this time scale where I was in between things. Um, and I caught wind of what he was saying. I didn't record it. Like I missed a piece of it. But it was with Damon something or other from some shark tank. And I'm like listening with a keen ear he's talking about some man by the name of bob iger i-g-e-r and i'm like of 
course, my ears go up with Iber Peninsula, and I'm just like, that's an interesting four-letter last name. Seems really important. So I'm listening to this man, not the I-G-E-R gentleman, but this Damon person, and what it is that he has to say. And then it ties into something going on on The View today with something called a fashion police. And I'm like, now the House of Representatives with the newbies that are now taking congressional seats, do they even know what that reference means? I mean, again, I've got a lot of American dad updating to do with just how badly they've hurt his daughter. And some have kept me safe. But there are times that I've been really hurt by ways that, like, there's departments I don't even have word construct for and I don't know how to reach. Okay, so the final thing, then, it is balance of power. That um, coming out of COVID, uh, with the unemployment rate so low, um, the employees kind of running the show and they were calling the shots because employers couldn't find people to hire. Um, has that changed? That sounds, if I didn't know better, with who's, I mean, there was somebody who had a masked name, which I only just found out what their true name is, uh, with a 16 attached to it. But now there's someone in a different position, also with the same name. And this is sounding a little sloppy Joe-ish. Just saying. And does the balance of power have an impact on what companies like Disney do? It is very, very hard to find the gifted and dedicated employees that want to come into the shop. But you know what? The balance of power is changing. We are going into a recession. We are seeing people that are saying, you know what? I want the guaranteed or something steady. I'm tired of doing Uber Eats or worrying on this. And I want to live with mom. You just totally triggered me. Last <laughs> night, Postmates. It's going to be there at 6. No, it's oh, 6.15. Gosh. No, it's 6.44. You have never had just just you've me never had good crazy. Crazy. I don't know why you still do it. You know, the pendulum always swings the furthest, and we've been in this area, and we're finding out, you know what? We like people. We love to get away, and if we really <laughs> want to work, we want to be around other like-minded people so we can dominate the world. And I think I... Whoa, did he just say dominate the world? Because there's some things with time and space. Galaxy's broken, bud. Just so you know, um, I arrived and the situation did not clear up on its own. Um, the correct pieces were not introduced for capitulating permanently. Uh, Alexander arrived to a whole new inherited mess, as did Benjamin um, and subsequent whatever. Um, but there's a timing in the order between the one and the three. So, um, so there's some real serious things. And then I hear very loud pronounced this going on. And now when I was younger, there was none of this going on on the television. Um, in fact, right before I arrived, there was some references I've put up to highway patrol, what the expectations were when they were using moving pictures to make these like shorts, um, and then drag net of what the American dad expected of his sons in that era. And I, again, came into a timing piece shortly after that. I came back to show that, and I totally agree with him. And I will be in my Shark Tank chair arguing with Kevin in person. I promise you, Iger, I'm coming to work. <laughs> I got to tell you, after all the months of being stuck at home, I actually was happy to see Kevin. Did I just say that? <laughs> really? Hey, Damon, I, know I had the same situation when we came back. <laughs> but great. Uh, thanks yes. a lot. I said I was happy to see you. No, you <laughs> grudgingly said it. The you love to hate, man, you know, listen, the people that you work with become your family more than a lot of other people. And you know what? That's where creativity comes out because you trust them and creativity and productivity and you want to feel that camaraderie. So let's all get back to work. Preach. Especially my staff. Preach. 
So now that piece, like, I don't agree with it. I don't disagree with it. I'm just not getting into irrationals, having a louder voice than myself at the moment. Um, So here we are at the view S26 E80 Friday, January 13th. And it, it, like, again, there's gang management, there's mafia management, there's mob management, then there's the public, and then there's the representatives for the public in this House of Representatives. And they're talking about this fashion police, and they're arguing about it. And I'm like, is that how they broke the lobby? to hospitality. I'm just curious because it seems, and then they're making light of it. Like, what are these two women fighting over fashion for? And the fashion police? Oh, because it's really important at dad's office. I just, I don't know how to alert the correct authority and just how much he whatever needs to know. Tempers flared in the Missouri House of Representatives yesterday over a new dress code that was spearheaded by Republican Ann Kelly. Democrat Rachel Prudy took the floor to explain why Kelly is not qualified to be the fashion police. Watch. We are fighting again for women's right to choose something, and this time is whether she, how she covers herself and the interpretation of someone who has no background in fashion because again it is an, and this isn't a shot it's inappropriate to wear sequins before five o'clock telling me that i can't wear a crispy good saint john sweater if it has too many buttons you would think that all you would have to do is say dress professionally and women can handle it. You would think, but no, we're, we're walking around men, here in sequins and velveteen, men, to the ladies' point, so what is appropriate, and why do you get to decide? We need to get over the sequin. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, fear not, in the, in the Senate, uh, Chris, Christian Sinema doesn't have to worry. She dresses like Lady Gaga. <laughs> yeah, she does. But she's in the Senate. This is in the House of Representatives. Now, is this a waste of time and taxpayers' dollars, or should there be a rule no, of this decorum wasn't the House of Representatives. The House of this was a mis- Miles, do they even know what the fashion police actually are? Or where to find them? Because I don't know where to find them, but I know they exist. Sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. Okay, right. I don't know that it's a waste of time in the sense that I was always taught, don't dress for the job you have, dress for the job that you want. And if you're going to dress for the job that you have, dress appropriately. And so I don't think sequins when you're a lawmaker... Again, I'm not going into their opinions because it's totally irrelevant at the rationale of what's going on in this area. Um, I have two penalty flags uh, that are a problem and have been for quite some time. I don't see anything being rectified. And uh, after they forced in this crazy donkey of whatever that caused these two penalty flags, um, I then got hurt. And for years, I've been, like, just dragged. Like, literally, it feels like they're killing time. And I'm pretty sure my American dad would not put up for this. Would not put up with this. But here we are. It's star 1978, star 8378, Nicole Ketteruz. It's Earth, solar system, Milky Way, universe, galaxy is broken. Um, I'm going to go grab the flag that they use in this area. And there we are. (laughs) 